Hello and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we're revising some wire question on waves. Uh, we'll take some past questions from WIAC and then we'll answer as many as we can. Now, this particular question, 25 here from this year, says the equation of a certain progressive transverse wave is y equal to 2 sine 2 pi all, um, into t all over 0 0.01 minus x all over 30 where x and y are in centimeters and t in seconds calculate the, calculate the period of the wave all right um first things first i'll get down the equation the equation given here is y is equal to 2 sine 2 pi into t all over 0 0.01 minus x all over 30 so i have this all right so i'm going to calculate the period here so I'll first of all get my calculator and let's do this together all right so let's solve this how do you solve this question your first task is to recall the wave equation now the wave equation is given by y being equal to a sine 2 pi x all over lambda minus 2 pi f t. All right. So this is the general wave equation. What we say y represents to the horizontal, sorry, y represents the vertical displacement of the wave particle. A represents the amplitude of the wave particle. Um, these and these are constants. X represents the horizontal displacement of the wave particle um, lambda represents the wavelength of the wave particle f represents frequency of the wave particle and t represents the time that the um, particle undergoes its motion now for this now how do we solve this question now compare the given question with my general wave equation now observe that for my general wave equation here 2 pi is inside the brackets, not outside. So perhaps my first task would be multiply this by 2 pi. So I'll move 2 pi into this. 2 pi comes here and here. So from this equation, I have that y is equal to 2 sine 2 pi multiplied this. It gives you in bracket 2 pi t all over 0 0.01 minus this multiply this becomes 2 pi x so i'm having 2 pi x all over 30 so i have 30 here all right so i've multiplied this now and i've sent 2 pi inside the bracket it affects both this and this so what next we ask to find the period of this uh, wave particle now we know something here what we know is this that period t is equal to the inverse of frequency all right period is equal to the inverse of frequency so my task here is very simple i have to first of all find frequency if i find frequency i can now take the inverse of the frequency to get the period so how do you get how do you get frequency it's as easy as comparing this value to your general wave equation so whenever you're giving questions on waves your task is always simple. As much as you can, try to correctly record the wave equation and then compare values. If I were to compare values, it means that the amplitude is equal to 2, just like this. So it's that easy. But then we are focusing on getting the frequency. So how do the frequency? We can see that frequency is attached to T. So I will look to this equation here. Which one here is attached to T? That's this one here, T. I will take this and this. So it means that 2 pi f t is equal to i will ignore this one here and take this one instead all right you don't assume that this is always equal to this and then this is equal, is equal to this no it's not like that you look at um the variables there for instance i can see x here i can see x here so that means if i were to equate i will equate this one to this instead so by looking at this i can see that 2 pi x 2 pi x lambda 30 so it means that the wavelength lambda 
is equal to 30. Since we, uh, from the question, it was in centimeter, so it, it became, um, wavelength becomes 30 centimeter. But then my focus is on frequency. So I'll equate this one to this one. Why? I can see t here. So 2 pi ft is equal to this one here. It becomes 2 pi t all over 0 0.01. Now you may want to ask, what about the negative? Why, not, why, why am I not equating minus 2 pi ft to this? Why did I ignore the negative? The idea is this. The negative here only shows you direction. All right? It's not that important when it comes to wave. All right? So this negative here only shows you direction. So you can ignore it. Just take this and this, leaving out the negative. All right? If I have these two here, my task was to find frequency such that if I take inverse, I will not get the required period. So how do I get this? It's as easy as if I have two terms in mathematics, if I have two terms on both sides of an equation, they can cancel out. So T can cancel T. It's, math it's mathematically correct. 2 can cancel 2. And then pi can cancel pi. This leaves you with 1. So that means the frequency F is equal to 1 all over 0 0.01. That's my frequency. So therefore, period. This is in hertz. Frequency is in hertz. So therefore, period T is equal to 1 all over frequency. And that's equal to 1 divided by this 1 all over 0 0.01. Um, to make it easier for you, perhaps, let's get this value. 1 divided by 0 0.01, we have 100. I'm having 100. 100 hertz. So this value is equal to 100 hertz. So hence, this is equal to 1 all over. We just punch this. And our value is 100. Um, okay, so 1 over 0 0.01 gives you 100. So therefore, the period T is equal to 1 all over 100. That's 0 0.01. We have 0 0.01. Period is measured in seconds. So I have 0 0.01 seconds. I will check which option rhymes with this. All right, so from what I have here, that should be option B, 0 0.010 seconds, the same thing. So the answer there is option B. All right, so this is how we solve this particular question. All right, so let's look at another wire question on waves. Now, this question says, given the wave equation Y equal to 5 sine 3X minus 40, Find the frequency and period of the wave. All right, so we're given to find um, frequency and period here. So I'll just get the calculator and we'll solve this together. All right, so let's get this done. So I said, whenever you're given a question um, in your WIAC exam that has to do with the wave equation, your task is simple. Try to recall the wave equation, which is given by y equal to a sine 2 pi x all over lambda minus 2 pi ft. That's, that's your first task. Try to recall the equation. From here, we said our second task is to compare equations. I'm asked to find frequency and period in this question i can see that frequency is attached to the t so hence i'll simply compare values for this one here i'm having 2 pi ft so it becomes 2 pi ft is equal to of course f represents a required frequency is equal to look at this one here the term that contains a t is this one here that's 40 that becomes 40. All right. Of course, minus, minus. So you can ignore the minus. So if I have this now, my tax here is to make F subject of the formula, which has to do with, or for me to do that, I'll have to divide this by 2 pi t, divide here by 2 pi t. From here, 2 pi cancels 2 pi. 
t cancels t. So hence, from here to t can cancel t. So hence, we have that f, the frequency, is equal to 4 all over 2 pi, which can be reduced to 2 here 1, 2 here 2 in lowest term, and that's equal to 2 all over pi hertz. So we have this as 2 over pi hertz. We can choose to express, in, express this in decimal. That will be equal to 2 over pi. Um, that's equal to 2 all over pi is 3.142. Okay, so F is equal to 2 all over 3.142. And that's the value of pi. So 2 all over 3.142. That's about 0 0.63. 65 hertz. All right, so this is my answer in four decimal places. You can choose to use two decimal places, which is approximately 0 0.12. 6 is plus 1, so 3 plus 1 gives you 4, so 64 hertz. All right, so this is the value of the frequency. We also ask to find the period. We know that period, recall that period C is the inverse of frequency. And hence, that's equal to 1 all over, I will choose to take this value here, that's 0 0.6365. If I punch this, the period T is equal to 1 all over 0 0.6365, that's about 1.57 in seconds, approximately 1.57 seconds. So this is how we get... Um, period. If you ask to find the amplitude, obviously amplitude A is equal to 5. If I compare them, so the amplitude is 5. If I ask to find the wavelength, simply equate this to this, equate this to, so I'll have something of 2 pi x over lambda is equal to 3x. So we'll have this, and then make lambda subject of the formula. These two will swap position. So, lambda wavelength is equal to this all over 3x. All right? It's mathematically correct. This will cancel this. So, it becomes 2 pi over 3. That becomes 2 times um, two times pi all over 3. So, the wavelength, this is equal to 2.09 meters or centimeters, whichever way. All right? So, this is how we solve problems involving wave equation in yx. All right? So it's as simple as always remember that you have to recall the correct formula for wave equation and then um, compare values. All right. So let's take another example on waves. This question says, the sketch graph above represents a progressive wave motion from the left to the right. The period of the wave is 0 0.125 seconds. Determine the, wave, determine the values of the amplitude and wavelength respectively of the wave. And the next one says, determine the speed of the wave. But we'll take them one after the other. The first one says, determine the amplitude and wavelength. Okay, so let's get amplitude and the wavelength. So first things first, what are we given here? Here we're given the period T as equal to... 0 0.125 seconds, 125 seconds. All right, we have to find what and what amplitude A and wavelength. So, amplitude A is equal to unknown, wavelength lambda is equal to unknown. All right, let's get this done. So, let's get this done. Um, so, first is first, this is um, a diagram showing the wave motion. If I'm to get amplitude, so at this point now you need a good idea of what your wave diagram looks like. Usually, when we talk about amplitude, amplitude is simply the highest um, vertical amplitude is the highest vertical uh, displacement of a wave particle from the origin or from the rest position. In this case here, the origin becomes the horizontal line. So my maximum vertical displacement, either upward or downward, is called amplitude. 
all right if i look at this question here that means amplitude will be distance from here to here this becomes the amplitude or perhaps you can take distance from here downwards if i look at the diagram here i'm given that total distance from here which is the top to the bottom here is 16. of course these two are expected to be symmetrical by symmetrical it means um, the same distance upwards and downwards so if that's true that means if from here from the top to the bottom is 16 it means from here to here should be what 8 cm and then downwards from here to here becomes another 8 cm so when i combine this 8 cm and 8 cm i will now have the 16 cm hence the amplitude from the rest position or the origin to the highest displacement is 8 cm so therefore amplitude amplitude a is equal to 8 i'm working with centimeters so it becomes 8 cm so that's how we get our amplitude our next task is to find wavelength so wavelength lambda let's get wavelength wavelength lambda is equal to what's wavelength wavelength is simply the distance between by definition wavelength is the distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs that's the definition of wavelength distance between two successive crests or two successive troughs if that's true that means this is called a crest right the upper positions here are called crests the lower positions here are called trough okay so this is how you get your wavelength distance from here to here is a wavelength distance from here to here is a wavelength alternatively you can pick from the origin so where this from here the wavelength is simply where your wave completes a total circle upward and downwards so that means it, if if i choose not to take crest distances or trough distances i can start from the origin so where my this where my my wave particle starts from the origin goes up comes down and goes back to the origin makes one wavelength so from here to this point let's call here a let's call here b from a to b forms a wavelength all right so i have one wavelength here also from here it starts another motion goes upwards to here comes downward to this point here that means let's call this c from b to c forms another wavelength that's this and then finally same thing here it goes from here repeats the same motion goes up midway comes down back to origin call here d from c to d forms your third wavelength now usually we expect that the wavelength should be equal this is just a board drawing that's why they may not be equal all right so if i look at this question correctly you can see that i have one wavelength two wavelengths and three wavelengths so three times the wavelength or three wavelengths is equal to my total distance here which is 27 cm all right three wavelengths from a to b from b to c and from c to d gives me total distance of 27 cm so hence three lambda is equal to 27 cm let's get lambda divide here by three divide here by three this cancels this so wavelength lambda is equal to 27 over 3 that gives you 9 cm so therefore the amplitude a is equal to 8 cm and the wavelength lambda is equal to 9 cm so let's get a, a um, question and see which um, option corresponds to 8 and 9 they said respectively so 8 cm 9 cm let's see which option corresponds to that all right so what we're seeing here the option that corresponds to that is option b 8 9 so option b becomes the correct option 26 there says determine the speed of the wave you have the options there let's get speed of the wave um okay 
So to get speed of the wave, we know that speed and velocity are used interchangeably. Well, we know that velocity or speed v is equal to displacement x all over time or period t. All right, speed is displacement over time. If that's true, let's get this done. So that means v is equal to my displacement becomes, of course, I'm using horizontal displacement, not vertical. So it becomes from here to here, which is 27 cm all over time. What time did it take for you to have the total displacement? So what time did it take for you to move from A to D? That's the question. We are given period C as 0.125 seconds. The question now be, what is a period? A period is simply the time it takes a wave particle to complete one um, oscillation. All right? The time it takes a wave particle to undergo one complete oscillation is called the period. So it means the time it takes um, a wave particle to undergo one successful circle is called a period. That means period from here to here is one circle. When it goes up, down, and comes back to origin, it's one period. So I have from here, one period is from here to this, that's one period. Also from here to this, two period. Also from here to this. So it takes uh, one period to move from here to this point, two period from here to this point, the third period from here to this point. So I have three period there. That means my total time becomes three times. They gave us the value for just one period. So it becomes three times 0 0.125 seconds. So it becomes three times the period because I have three periods here, three complete circles. Hence, this is equal to 27 centimeters all over. I'm having three times. Let me check this. So three times 0 0.125. That gives you 0 0.375 seconds. Hence, the speed or velocity is equal to 27 divided by 0 0.375. If I do this, this is equal to 72. My unit is cm per second centimeters per second. Hence, the speed of the wave particle is 72 centimeters per second. We'll take this and see which op option corresponds. Chief, thank you very much. Huh? Thank you. Alright, so if you look at this, the option that corresponds is option D, which is 72 centimeters per second. Alright, so that's how you solve this. We've done a detailed lecture on waves all right from the very scratch covering everything about wave its calculation major definitions and etc all right to access that video simply look at the link in the description of this video or simply watch the video here all right then see you in the next class